بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The trumpet has been blown shaking the long rested bodies within the layers of the earth Wake up and attend to the judgments of your Lord Leaving their graves they stand at the plain of resurrection before the Almighty in lowness each of whom has been given their book of deeds and is awaiting judgment each of whom would wish to find a relief, an escape, a rescue. At this great scene, a corner will call out, where are the apostles of Ali ibn al-Husayn alayhi salam? Where are the apostles of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam? Four individuals will shine through the arrogations. They will light up through the darkness of Qiyamah. They will light up through the darkness of the Day of Judgment, amongst which is a great man by the name of Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. Who is this man? What has he done to achieve such a great status in the hereafter? And to be called the Apostle of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam? What were his deeds? What were his virtues in this life for which he deserves to be relieved on the day of great terror known as Qiyamah? Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil al-Mut'imi A sincere believer, pious, brave, audacious and a noble man. He was known to be the doorway of Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn alayhi salam. He was mentioned by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam as someone who shows bravery, great bravery. Whereas Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam revealed a greater virtue of this man. The fact that each of us Shia Muslims here today, you and me, actually owe Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil the price of our tashayya. Because true Islam would not have reached us if it wasn't for him. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam said, After the martyrdom of al Hussein, peace be upon him, the people reverted away from Islam, except for three, Abu Khalid al-Kabuli, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, wa Jubayr ibn Mut'im, and the people then joined in and increased. In order for us to have a complete picture of how tashayya was spread after only three people stayed upon Islam. Only three remained upon Islam. This is Imam al-Sadiq's words. After the martyrdom of al Hussein, people reverted away from Islam, except for three. So in order for us to understand how tashayya was spread rapidly to the world, we must understand these two important points. One, the fact that Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil has deeply rooted his faith in his heart that safeguarded him against reverting away. Two, if we ponder upon the Imam's words for a moment and then the people joined in and increased, we would know that those three Noble men shouldered the great responsibility of preaching true Islam throughout their lives after the martyrdom of Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam. They guided a lot of people for Islam to reach us today unaltered. What is even more astonishing is the fact that Abu Khalid al-Kawri, who was one of three whom remained upon true Islam, after the martyrdom of Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam and the one who shouldered a great responsibility in guiding hundreds to Shia Islam. He himself, Abu Khalid I mean, he would not have been known as the virtuous Abu Khalid al-Kabuli if it was not for Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was the one who guided Abu Khalid and brought him to Tashayya. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli whose original name is Wardan. 
He was from Kabul, Afghanistan. He was originally a Qaysaniite who believed in the Imama of Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya. Briefly, the Qaysaniites, after the martyrdom of Sayyid al Shuhada, turned to Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, the son of Amir al Mu'mineen, to be the Imam, to be their Imam. And while Muhammad ibn Hanafiya did not deny this until Zayn al Abidin, the rightful Imam, had to step in and we, we will say put him in his place. And he done this with the help of an indiv individual that sadly today most Shias honor him and love him. But inshallah, we will speak about this in a later time or in a later series maybe. So he believed in the Imamah of Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, and he did not doubt for a moment that he was the legitimate Imam of his time until he met Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. And Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil took him to Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam. He stands at the door of Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli requesting permission to enter. Permission is granted. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli enters and approaches the Imam alayhi salam. And there was a shock. How did the Imam greet him? The Imam said, peace be upon him. Welcome, O Kankar. You have never visited us before. What brings you here? And down to the earth, Abu Khalid al-Kabuli immediately prostrates in thankfulness to Allah, the most exalted, for what he had just heard from the Imam. Why? What's the secret behind this new name, Kankar? that the Imam called him with. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli said, Praise be to Allah for allowing me to live until I have known the Imam of my time. And the Imam alayhi salam responded, And how do you know your Imam, O Kankar? To which Abu Khalid al-Kabuli replied, You have called me by the name that was given to me by my mother. And I was blind serving Ibn al Hanafiya for years, never doubting that he is the rightful Imam. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli then said, And when I came to you and asked you for permission, you granted me permission. I approached you and you called me by the name that was given to me by my mother. And that is how I have known that you are the rightful Imam whose authority is upon every Muslim. The infallible Imams, peace be upon them, as successors of the Holy Prophet, know the knowledge of the unseen, just like the previous prophets and their successors did. This is why the new name Kankar, which was only known by the mother of Abu Khalid al-Kabuli and her son Abu Khalid, was known to the Imam Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salam. Abu Khalid al-Kabuli then became close to the Imam, peace be upon him. He quenched his thirst for knowledge from the Imam alayhi salam. He learned from him until he reached the status of the Imam's most trustworthy companions. Subhanallah, Abu Khalid al-Kabuli was unguided. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed guidance upon him and therefore he wanted it for others. One of whom Abu Khalid al-Kabuli guided was a woman from Alu Ayan. Alu Ayan were a tribe known for their theology, jurisprudence, hadith, and strong intellectual reasoning. Abu Khalid managed to get through to this house of intellectuals. Alu Ayan wa mukhalifin. The sect that today refers to itself as Sunni. But yet, Abu Khalid al-Kabuli managed to get through to this house of intellectuals, debaters. Get through to them and he managed to convert one of the household's most respected individual. Which was Umm al-Aswad bintu Ayan. This great 
pious women then worked on her brothers. Umm al-Aswad's brothers were intellectual jurists and they had their respects among the Kufan community. And when Umm al-Aswad's brothers converted to true Islam and because of what they have from knowledge, reputation and followers, Shi'ism spread into Kufa rapidly and spread to the world where in the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam it reached a quarter of the world's population. You may wonder, who are Umm al-Aswad's brothers? Who are the individuals that had that much respect that as soon as the Kufans saw that they converted to Shi'ism, they straight away followed and followed their leader. You can say this. They are known to be the shining stars in Shia Islam today. Amongst which is the well-known Zurar ibn A'yan, Humran and Bukair, the best companions of Imam al-Sadiq and Baqir alayhi salam. Thousands and thousands of narrations have reached us today through Zurara, Humran, Bukair, Abdullah ibn Bukair, and the grandsons, and the grandsons of their grandsons. Subhanallah. You may wonder, why am I speaking about Alu A'yan when my aim, in fact, is to shed light on the life of Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil? The fact is this. If it was not for Alu A'yan, a lot of the Imam's sayings and teachings would not have reached us today. If it was not for Umm al-Aswad, Alu A'yan would not have been guided. If it was not for Abu Khalid al-Kabuli, Umm al-Aswad would not have known Shia Islam. And if it was not for Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, Abu Khalid would not have known the Imam of his time. No wonder why Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil reached the status of apostle of Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. Why? Because when you open Al-Kafi, for, for instance, you open Al-Kafi and then you see Han Zurara, Han Bukair, Han Abdullah ibn Bukair. If you go back and see those and study the, the biographies of those personalities, you would see that they were guided because of their older sister, Umm al-Aswad bint Ahyan. And you look into Umm al-Aswad and you see that she was guided through Abu Khalid. And then you look into Abu Khalid, you see that he was guided through Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. What is interesting is another great virtue of Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil that many may not know. The fact that he was the brother of Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn alayhi salam, Zayn al-Abideen, through milk kinship. Washika was the mother of Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. She breastfed the Imam, peace be upon him, when his mother, Sayyida Shahrabanu, passed away when he was very young, peace be upon him. Washika was respected by Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam and addressed as O oh Mother by the Imam. This made others think that Washika was the actual biological mother of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was a disciple of the Imam, peace be upon him, a door to him. A great status one might not achieve if he did not bear the burden and hardship of preaching whilst manifesting and openly declaring his disassociation from the Imam's killers and their oppressors. Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was seen at Al-Kunasa calling out from the top of his voice, O oh servants of Allah, we are innocent from what you are hearing. Whoever who curses Ali, then upon him falls the curse of Allah. We disassociate ourselves from Al Marwan and what they worship and what they worship other than Allah. The brave Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil rejected to stay quiet, rejected to practice taqiyya, even in such times where the Shi'as were being pursued and butchered by the tyrants known as Al Hajjaj. Ibn Yusuf al thaqafi the bloodthirsty murderer. This also teaches us, O Shia, to speak the truth no matter what circumstance you're in. Under the rule of a tyrant or not, if we want to achieve the rank of Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, 
we must speak the truth openly and relay the message of the household of the Prophet, peace be upon them, no matter what is the cost. Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil bore the hardship of not being listened to. As history tells us, that only a few of the Mukhalifin, opponents of Ahlul Bayt, used to accept what he says, whilst the majority rejected. This is what led him to enter Masjid al-Nabawi and declare his complete disassociation from the opponents of Ahlul Bayt calling out the Quranic verse, we have rejected you and there has started between us hostility and hatred forever. This act by Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil is considered compatible with the traditions of the Holy Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. There has already been for you an excellent pattern in Abraham and those with him. When they said to their people, Indeed, we are disassociated from you, and whatever you worship other than Allah, we have denied you, and there has appeared between us and you animosity and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. This great man, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, achieved the rank of great faith, stood firm, steadfast, he achieved the rank of apostle. And at the end, he was blessed to seal his life with martyrdom. And what a great martyrdom. Due to his bravery in truth, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was arrested by the policemen of Al-Hajjaj brought before him by force. Curse Abu Turab, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This was al-Hajjaj, the criminal tyrant's command to Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. As we know, dear brothers, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was described by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam as someone who shows bravery. Al-Hajjaj, the moment Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil came to him, what did he say? He said, curse Abu Turab, Amir al muminin If we go back to see what was Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil statement when he entered Masjid al-Nabawi. He said, O servants of Allah, we are innocent from what, you are, from what you are hearing. Whoever who curses Ali, then upon him falls the curse of Allah. Straight away, as soon as Al-Hajjaj sees Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, what does he first command him? He says, curse Abu Tarab. We know from this, brothers, that Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi used to love breaking the image and character of the person who's looked up upon, who's looked up to. Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, as we mentioned, he was someone who the people looked up to. He was a man who shows bravery. He was a man who was well-spoken. He was a man of honor and dignity and knowledge. So what was Al-Hajjaj? Come on to him. He wants to break his personality. He wants to show that Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil contradicts himself while he's in front of him. Because as we know, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil said, we reject, uh, may the curse of Allah be upon the one who curses Ali. And Al-Hajjaj straight away commands, commands him, curse Abu Turab. He wants to break his image. Al-Hajjaj, the bloodthirsty murderer, which unfortunately, Ahlul Khilaf, the sect that refers to itself as Sunni, try to shine his image, try to uh, make him come out that he was, uh, he, he just killed all these people, he just murdered all these people and imprisoned all these people and killed the Tabi'een and, and the religious and the pious people just to unite the Ummah. Why doesn't the sect that refers to itself as Sunni speak the truth out of personalities? Speak the truth out of history. Why do they try to shine the image of Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, the bloodthirsty murderer? They say that the scholars have, have uh, not come to an agreement when it comes to Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. Just like, for example, when they do the same to Umar ibn al-Khattab. They try 
to shine his image. They try to hide this person's true personality. Umar ibn al-Khattab was worse than al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. He was the one who burnt out a whole city. Why is this not mentioned? Why is this not mentioned by Ahlul Khilaf? Why do they not have honesty? Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil killed, was killed by al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. He was commanded. This, the al-Hajjaj swordsman was commanded to cut off the hands and legs and to leave Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil to bleed out. They killed Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil because of his outspoken, truthful and forthright and direct speech. He was murdered after that. Now, dear brothers, I personally don't think that the narration has ended here. Because the narration only states that Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi commanded Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil to curse Abu Turab. And Yahya ibn, Abi, Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil refused. And Al-Hajjaj commands his swordsmen to cut off the hands and legs of Yahya and to leave him to bleed. There is a gap in this narration. We know that Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil was outspoken. He was a man who rejects to stay quiet on the oppressors of Amir al-Mu'mineen and the household of the Prophet. We would know from this that the narration did not end here. The narration did not end here. We would know that Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil rejected al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi and debated him. And I would say had a sharp debate with him that put al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi at his place. But history did not record this. Unfortunately, but we would know this because of what the Imam said about him, because what we know of him, that he was well-spoken, he was outspoken, he was a man that refuses to bow down to anything that's not upon the truth. They killed Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, the pious, the faithful, the trustworthy companion and brother of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam. They ordered for his arms and legs to be cut off and they killed him. A great end to his life. He obtained the key to paradise, the key to dignity. And as a result, the sun will shine on the day of Qiyamah and he would be known as the virtuous Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil, the apostle of Imam Zain al-Abideen. Whoever is eager to attain the rank of disciples or martyrs, then let him act out as Yahya ibn Umm al-Tawil. <laughs>